I have spent my entire life studying the cosmos, mapping the invisible threads that bind space and time together, but nothing, absolutely nothing, prepared me for what NASA discovered three weeks ago when 3i Atlas changed its trajectory mid-flight and began transmitting something directly toward Earth. Before we begin, I need you to do something for me. Comment your city name below and tell me, have you noticed anything unusual in the night sky recently? Strange lights? Patterns that don't move like satellites? NASA is quietly collecting civilian reports, and your observation might be the missing piece. Do it now. What I'm about to share may change the way you see humanity's place in the universe. My name is Michio Kaku, and for decades I have stood at the intersection of theoretical physics and cosmology, always believing that when we finally made contact with extraterrestrial intelligence, it would be a moment of celebration. I was wrong. What 3i Atlas has released isn't a greeting, it's a warning. And the more we decode it, the more I realize we may have already crossed a threshold we were never meant to approach. Let me take you back to October 2019. That's when astronomers first detected 3i Atlas, an interstellar object, the third of its kind ever observed entering our solar system. Unlike asteroids or comets born within our celestial neighborhood, this object came from beyond, from the space between stars, from a place where the rules we understand begin to dissolve into something far stranger. At first it seemed unremarkable, a chunk of primordial ice and rock drifting through the void for millions of years, passing through our system like a ghost through a wall. We cataloged it, we observed its trajectory, and then, like responsible scientists, we moved on. But 3i Atlas didn't move on. In March of this year, something happened that shattered every model we had. The object decelerated, not gradually, as if caught in a gravitational field, but sharply, deliberately, as if something inside it had woken up. Then it changed course. It adjusted its velocity with a precision that defies natural explanation. And then, for exactly 47 seconds, it emitted a signal so powerful that every radio telescope on Earth capable of detecting it went into overdrive. I was in my office at City College of New York when I received the call. It was a colleague from the NASA Jet Propulsion Laboratory, someone I've known for 30 years, and I could hear something in his voice I had never heard before. Fear. He told me they needed theoretical physicists linguists, AI specialists, and military advisors in the same room within six hours. That's when I knew this wasn't about science anymore. This was about survival. The signal wasn't random noise. It wasn't the kind of cosmic static we've been sifting through with CT for half a century. This was structured, layered, recursive. It contained mathematical constants, pi, the golden ratio, the fine structure constant, but embedded within frameworks we don't have names for yet. Imagine receiving a message written in a language you've never seen, but recognizing your own name spelled out in the margins. That's what this was. It knew we were listening. It knew we would understand just enough to be terrified. Within 72 hours, the world's leading quantum physicists, astrobiologists, and cryptographers were brought into a secure facility I cannot name, in a location I cannot disclose. We were told to decode it, we were told to understand its intent, and we were told, above all else, not to let the public panic. But here's what they didn't tell us, what they didn't tell anyone until it was too late. 3i Atlas isn't an object, it's a probe and the signal it released wasn't meant for us, it was meant for something already here. Let that sink in for a moment. We assumed we were alone. We assumed that if intelligent life existed, it would be light years away, separated from us by the vast, cold ocean of space. But what if that assumption was the lie we told ourselves to sleep at night? What if the galaxy has been watching us all along, waiting for us to reach a certain threshold of technological advancement before making contact, or worse, before initiating containment. There's a concept in astrobiology called the Great Filter. It's a hypothesis that tries to explain why, in a universe teeming with billions of potentially habitable planets, we haven't encountered any other civilizations. The idea is simple but chilling. 
Somewhere between the emergence of life and the ability to colonize the stars, there exists a barrier, a filter, that most species never pass through. Maybe it's nuclear war. Maybe it's climate collapse. Maybe it's artificial intelligence run amok. Or maybe, just maybe, the filter isn't something we do to ourselves. Maybe it's something that's done to us. I'm going to share something with you now that will sound like science fiction, but I assure you, it is not. The decoded portions of the 3i Atlas transmission contain what can only be described as a galactic compliance protocol. It outlines, in painstaking detail, the conditions under which a species is allowed to continue existing beyond its home planet. And according to this protocol, humanity is currently in violation of multiple cosmic regulations. We have developed nuclear weapons. We have created artificial intelligence without safeguards. We have begun to manipulate genetic code, and most damningly, we have started sending signals into space, announcing our presence to whatever might be listening. The transmission refers to Earth as a quarantined developmental zone. Think about that phrase, quarantined, as if we are a disease that must be contained, as if our very existence poses a threat to the wider galactic community. And the signal released by 3i Atlas, it wasn't a message to us. It was a status update, a notification sent to a network we didn't know existed, informing them that the quarantine has been breached, that we have reached the threshold. Then the signal stopped, 47 seconds of cosmic revelation, and then silence. But the object didn't stop. 3i Atlas continued its adjusted trajectory, moving with purpose, with intent, toward the inner solar system, toward us. And that's when the secondary anomaly was discovered. Three days after the initial signal, observatories in Chile and Hawaii detected something emerging from the trajectory path of 3i Atlas. At first, we thought it was debris, fragments breaking off as the object heated up approaching the sun. But debris doesn't move in formation. Debris doesn't emit low-frequency electromagnetic pulses. And debris certainly doesn't begin replicating. What we're seeing now, what NASA and the European Space Agency are tracking in real time, are smaller objects, thousands of them, dispersing from three eye atlas like seeds from a dying flower, each one roughly the size of a school bus, each one moving with independent propulsion, and each one heading toward Earth's orbital plane, they will arrive in approximately 90 days. I have spent sleepless nights running simulations, consulting with colleagues who are equally terrified and equally bound by secrecy. We have considered every possibility. Are these surveillance drones, terraforming instruments, biological sample collectors, or are they something far more direct than automated response to a species that has been flagged as a potential threat? The data suggests all of the above, and that's what keeps me awake at night. The realization that we are not dealing with explorers or diplomats. We are dealing with a system, a galactic immune response, and we are the infection. But here's where it gets even stranger, even more unsettling. Buried within the latter portions of the transmission, the parts we're still struggling to decode, there are references to something called the awareness event. It describes a moment in a species evolution when collective consciousness reaches a critical threshold when the boundary between individual minds begins to blur, when technology and biology merge into something new, something that the galaxy apparently monitors very, very carefully. And according to the timeline embedded in the signal, humanity is approaching that event right now, within the next decade, maybe sooner. The rapid advancement of artificial intelligence, brain-computer interfaces, quantum computing, genetic engineering, these aren't just technological milestones, they're evolutionary triggers, and the galaxy has seen this before, many times, in many species, and it has protocols in place to deal with it. I keep thinking about the Fermi paradox. Where is everybody? If the universe is so vast, so old, so full of potential, why haven't we met anyone? Maybe the answer is staring us in the face. Maybe we haven't met anyone because species that reach our level of development either destroy themselves or they're destroyed. Maybe the cosmos isn't empty. Maybe it's carefully curated. Maybe there are gardeners out there, pruning the branches that grow too wild, too fast, too dangerous. There's something deeply humbling, almost spiritual, about confronting your own insignificance on a galactic scale. For centuries, we believed we were the center of creation, 
Then we learned we orbit the sun. Then we learned our sun is one of billions. Then we learned our galaxy is one of trillions. And now we're learning that even our existence might be conditional, that we live or die based on criteria set by minds we cannot comprehend, following rules we never agreed to. But there's also something defiant rising in me, something human. We didn't ask to be born into a universe with invisible wardens. We didn't ask to be judged by standards we were never told about. And yet here we are, conscious, curious, creative, flawed, yes, violent, yes, but also capable of extraordinary beauty and compassion. If the galaxy wants to erase us for daring to reach beyond our cradle, then let them try. But they should know we will not go quietly. We will not accept extinction without asking why. We will demand to be heard. The objects from 3i Atlas are coming. In 90 days, give or take, they will enter Earth's atmosphere. Governments around the world are quietly preparing. Military installations are being retrofitted with directed energy weapons. Contingency plans are being drafted. Bunkers are being stocked. But no one is telling the public because, frankly, what would we even say? How do you tell 8 billion people that we've been living under cosmic surveillance and the bill has finally come due? I think about my students. I think about my children. I think about every person who has ever looked up at the stars and felt wonder instead of fear. And I wonder if that wonder was ever justified, or if we were always just children playing in a yard, unaware of the fence around us, unaware of what lies beyond. The final decoded fragment of the three I Atlas transmission contains something unexpected, a choice. It outlined two pathways for humanity. The first, voluntary limitation. We halt all interstellar communication. We dismantle our most dangerous technologies. We accept our place as a developing species under galactic supervision. We live, but we live small. The second pathway was less clear, obscured by encryption we haven't cracked yet, but the little we could extract suggests it involves something called integration, a merging of human consciousness with a larger galactic network, a sacrifice of individuality for survival, a trade we may not be ready to make. But here's the terrifying part. The choice isn't ours. The transmission makes it clear that our response time has already elapsed. Whatever is coming in 90 days, it's not a negotiation. It's an implementation. The decision has been made for us, by us, through every action we've taken as a species up until this moment. We are living with the consequences of choices made by scientists, leaders, and dreamers who never imagined their inventions would summon judgment from the stars. I want to believe there's hope. I want to believe that somewhere in the decoded data, there's a loophole, a way to prove we're worth keeping around. Maybe that's why I'm telling you this. Maybe that's why I'm risking everything to speak openly about what I've seen. Because if we're going to face whatever comes next, we should face it together, awake, aware, and unafraid. Follow this channel as we continue decoding the universe's final warnings, as we track the approach of these objects, as we search for answers in the spaces between the data. Because if this is truly the end, then we deserve to see it coming. And if it's not the end, if there's still a chance, then we need every mind, every voice, every perspective working together to find it. So I'll leave you with this question, the one that has haunted me every night since I first saw the transmission. If the galaxy has been watching us, judging us, preparing to intervene, what do you think they see when they look at humanity? Are we a threat to be neutralized or a potential to be nurtured? Are we a disease or are we a miracle? And more importantly, what will we choose to be in the 90 days we have left? Comment below. Tell me what you think. Tell me what you've seen. Tell me if you still believe we're alone. Because I don't anymore. And I don't think I ever will again.